as all of a sudden I opened this up to this month of a time to go out and speak and do some different things, I've been very selective um, in the ones that I've chosen. I'm, I've spoken at the Seattle Children's Home Charity Function. I've spoken at the Kiwanis um, Eastside Athletic Function. I, I mean, I've spoken to some things that I think matter. Uh, I'm not trying to get out there and just throw myself out there in front of everybody to uh, so everyone can say, oh, I got a chance to see Coach Sark speak. That's not what this is about. I'm hoping to do something tangible for you guys tonight that, that is there, that you can kind of carry, whether you're younger or older or whatever that may be, um, that may make a difference. And when I started talking to Mike about this and, and the possibility of doing of it, and when things came up, well, what are, what are you guys trying to get accomplished? What is this about? It really hit home because I think there's a lot of parallels with our football program and what you guys are, are kind of riding yourselves through and what's happening. So the first is I want to kind of hit the rewind button of why I took this job and why now am I the head coach of the University of Washington from coming from USC. In 1996, I was a starting quarterback at BYU. We finished the year 14-1, and one, number five in the country. Our only loss came right here at Husky Stadium. <laughs> and it was Eight sacks, false starts, <laughs> sore, MRI as soon as I got off the plane, all of those things. And then still that thorn in my side of we didn't get a chance to play for the national championship because we lost right here at Husky Stadium. And I feel like there was a little payback in that game from 1984, so there was a lot of parallels there of, of, of that job. That started it. And then I came back and had an opportunity to our first year at USC with Pete Carroll, we were staying over in the Hyatt in Bellevue, and we're coming over the 520, and it's a beautiful day out, and I always had to ride number two. You know, Pete rode in the front of the bus, and I had to sit right behind him. And he leans back to me, and he says, this place is unbelievable. You know, the boats are out there. And I said, no, I'm kidding, man. This is unreal. And we go out, and we play the game, and um, it's the year University of Washington's coming off, winning the Rose Bowl with Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, and... John Anderson hits a 47-yard field goal with no time left to beat us. And uh, I just remember thinking, man, this is a great place. It's a pretty special place. You know, although we had lost the, the feeling and the, the energy and the excitement in the stadium, um, was something that was pretty special. And so as we go on our run at USC and opportunities come and opportunities go and, and you're trying to decide, should I take this job or not, every job is different. You know, a credit to my former boss, Pete Carroll, who now happens to be up here, you know, he always challenged you as a coach, and it was about having a plan. And so I, early on in my second year there, I had made a top five list of jobs in America that hopefully someday, if one of those I had an opportunity to be a head coach at, I was going to really go for it. Oddly enough, this job was one of them. you got to get used to me. If you ever hear me speak, get used to my language, okay? So... <laughs> And the other guy that made that list sit next to me is Lane Kiffin. And so it's a real true, true story. And the top of his list was that job that he's at now. And that was not the top of my list. This job happened to be. And that, that's no lie. I'm telling you, it was about at 2 in the morning during training camp, our second year at USC. This was the job I always thought I always wanted. Washington, when I was growing up, when I was growing up in Southern California, a Pac-10 guy, this was the place to come. I got one letter from Don James, and I got goosebumps, man. I'll never forget them. Holy crap. Don James sent me a letter. Little did I know. I didn't know that they did the stamp, you know. That <laughs> now it's all computerized. I just throw my stupid signature on the computer, right? The kids think it's for me. But anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> so I've always admired this place. And when the opportunity came, after turning down NFL jobs and college jobs, when the opportunity came and I really started digging, I really started digging, I thought to myself, as I go through it, I want to make sure the support's there. Is there truly the support from the administration, from the president down through the provost, down through the athletic director, to the rest of the department? Because that cohesiveness is huge. And when I got a chance to, from the first time I met with President Emmert, 
on Thanksgiving night at the Fairmont right downtown. I ditched my family and, and came downtown to downtown Seattle and had my first interview uh, with President Emmert and Scott Woodward. Um, the one question I really wanted to ask was about support, and that laid itself into eight or nine other questions, but the reality of it is you could feel it. I knew it was there. I knew they were going to support me in every way, whether it was financially, whether it was with admissions, whatever that may be, to really give us the support to make this program special the way it used to be. Well, used to be is a big word, but to me, the easiest way to do something is to try to somewhat recreate it, create it with your own style. And that is the true reason why I took this job, is because they've done it before. This is one of only two programs in the Pac-10 that's won a national championship in football. There's USC and there's University of Washington. So there's Oregon and there's Stanford, and there's UCLA and there's Cal, and there's all these other programs. There's only two that have done it. And that's this place and that place in Southern California. Then when you look at the numbers and you start to really look at All-Americans, players produced in the National Football League, first-round draft picks, 13 of the last 14 starting quarterbacks at the University of Washington have been drafted. And the numbers are staggering to think of what this place has accomplished. So to me, at that point, it became a no-brainer. Then I really, really went after it, and that's when Coach uh, President Emmer and Scott Woodward flew back down to Los Angeles had one more final meeting, end up taking the job, and um, they leaked it to ESPN on Thursday night, and I had my ass in a ringer for the next three days before I went to UCLA. But that's a whole other whole other issue. I wasn't supposed to go like that, you know. Keep it quiet till after the game, then I'm going to take the job. But um, we deal with it and we move on. And I think the theme that you guys have about surviving and thriving is key because ultimately when when we took this job to take on this this organization this football program and the first team meeting I had I'll never forget the next day after that night uh, when we had that at Hotel 1000 when I got a chance to meet everybody I remember standing in the tunnel of Husky Stadium waiting outside the team room for my first team meeting prior to uh, the press conference and here come all the players and my wife's kind of standing with me because she just kind of wanted to see him. But I said, babe, don't stand too close. I don't want to look soft. Now, just kind of. <laughs> and I didn't want to have a suit on. I took my tie off and my jacket. I said, give me a pullover or something. I want to look like a, you know, like, I want to look Don James, a hard ass. You know, these guys are coming out the tunnel. So I'm watching them coming down the tunnel. And all of a sudden, a couple, two things really dawned on me. One. Man, I didn't see any very little UW gear, man. I didn't see any W's and Husky football sweatshirts and hats. And I say, so that's kind of weird, you know. And then there's a lot of, nowadays, you see it more and more, but there's a lot of hooded sweatshirts on, and we were inside. It might have been raining outside, we were inside. A lot of non-eye contact, a lot of heads down, kind of, you know, just kind of working your way in, I thought. This is way more than just teaching X's and O's and, and getting guys big and strong. we got to change the way these guys think, the way they act, the way they talk, the way they walk, the way they dress, the way they eat. we had to completely change a culture, really change everything about this program. And my thought there was, as I was talking to the team, I'll never forget, I'm thinking about my press conference, I'm talking to the team, and I do that to you know, a little bit, you know, I kind of go bounce back and forth. I thought it was a pretty cool moment because I thought to myself, you know what, this ain't going to take us very long. We've been there before. This university knows how to do it. We've done it before, just like you guys have done it before, and these guys will get it done with your support, you know. And, and to me, it was about what are we going to get accomplished. And so I made a statement at the press conference, and I don't know if any of you guys watched it or not. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't care if you did or didn't. But I made a statement, it's not going to take us very long at the press conference. And I really believed it at the time, just because of what this place was built on. And I haven't wavered off of that statement, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. Don't get me wrong, guys, I'm not that way. But I haven't wavered off that statement, and I truly believe when you, when you believe in something and you do it daily, whether or not it's true or not, you're going to make it true.
you're going to get it done. And you're going to find a way to find a way to get it done. 